we talking about how can you know how can you know that you are having a life of impact or a life of purpose even before you get to your deathbed that has been what we've been discussing and of course we came up with an answer that the test question we're answering is what's the single greatest test for a life of purpose and a life of impact what have we found out we found out that your heart your spirit you will know there will be no qualm there will be no doubt about it you will know you'll have a witness what christians normally say you'll have a witness in your spirit that you are doing the right thing and when you're not doing the right thing you'll have a witness in your spirit telling you you ain't doing the right thing so what we're answering in the in the episode today is this how do we get there how do we get to a place where our heart can testify that we are doing the right thing that this is our purpose this is our calling this is our impact in life stay tuned even as we discuss that today Welcome to the Life Signatures podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to talk about different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Yeah, so obviously there has got to be a gauge, there's got to be some kind of lever, some kind of scale, some kind of test that will tell us. And we've said that if you wanted to know your purpose, if you wanted to know your impact, if you wanted to know whether you're on the right track or whether you have done that which is correct in life, that which is purposeful, that which you are meant to do in the first place, the gauging point is within you. It is not outside of you. It's not how many people. It is not in the numbers. It is not in the numbers. Remember what Steve R. Covey said? He said you can climb the ladder up to the top and only find out that it was leaning on the wrong wall. We as human beings have no problem churning out figures, churning out numbers. We have no problem taking action. I've, I've said that a gazillion times in this episode. We have no problem taking action. We can take action all day long. But the question is, is it the right action? Is it the effective action? How would you know this is the right action? You will know it in your spirit. You will know it in your heart. Your heart will tell you, that's it. That's it. And even when we've been given a very beautiful gauge in our spirits and in our hearts, even when we're doing that which doesn't matter, when we are not impacting our generations, when we're not f- feeling effective, you will see it in your spirit. You will feel it in your heart. You'll get the feedback. The heart never ceases to give the human being feedback. It never ceases to tell you we are doing the right thing or we are doing the wrong thing. Sadness of heart, uh, being forlorn at some point in time, is sometimes a gauge or a feedback or it's a result of a feedback that coming from your heart. That all these things you're doing, man, what's the point? All this amassing you're doing, you're earning this, you're earning that, you're going here, you're going there, you're doing all these 1,000 episodes in your podcast. What's the point? As long as you are not either doing what you're supposed to do or doing what you're supposed to do at the level at which you're supposed to do, your heart will give you feedback. You will feel discontent. You will feel disillusioned. You will feel not at peace. I mean, it doesn't have to be anything to do with luck. It doesn't have to be anything to do with the hardship. 
but it's just you are you are there in life and something is missing something is off it is off because you are not on purpose and the heart is the single most biggest test for a life of effectiveness a life of purpose and a life of impact the heart will never fail to tell you it will never fail as you're growing up as you are coming to your deathbed your heart will always speak it speaks both ways when you are busy doing things you're not supposed to do it will speak to you when you are busy doing things you're supposed to do it will speak to you and even when you come to the close of the age close of your age i should say when you come to the close of your days on earth their heart is so full of feedback so full of clarity it is so loud it is the loudest thing you ever heard in this world it is so big in decibels you will know for sure whether you did it or you didn't their heart is the center of feedback as far as your purpose is concerned but how do you get there that's what we were discussing in the episode yesterday and today want to do the same how do you get there we said you get there number 1 by knowing what to do find out what you're supposed to do to be effective in your life if you've been given the gift of speaking then why are you in the bank clacking away why shouldn't you be speaking to people inspiring people and motivating people if you've been given a gift to write why in the world Are you out there teaching? Why don't you seclude yourself in some dark place, okay, some conducive place and write best sellers and churn out article after article or book after book or whatever, content after content? That's doing the effective thing. Find out what you're supposed to do in the first place. How do you find out you discover what your purpose is? How do you know some of the hints of your purpose are found in your capacity, in your ability, in your gifts and in your talent and in the things that you're predisposed to do, the things that you both have passion for and you have capacity to do? So find out what to do. Find out what your purpose is. If you don't know what your purpose is, go to lifesignatures.life and find out. It is $550 for only 8 weeks. You will do it once and for all. Never be the same again. Find out what it is you're supposed to be doing centrally in your life. Don't tell me that the purpose of life is to be happy. Anyway, number 2. How do you get there? How do you get to that level where you know Your heart can now resonate and say, "Yes, you are on course. Yes, you're doing that which you're supposed to do." Number 2, basically after you found out what to do, what is the most effective thing to do is to become a steward of it. I mean to become authentic. The first thing yesterday is being aware. I mean knowing it. Awareness of what you're supposed to do. That's the first thing. But today the second thing is authenticity. Do it. If you know you are called to be a preacher, why are you being a politician? If you know you are called to be a homemaker, why are you in the corporate world? I'm not saying it's wrong to do all that stuff. It is okay. I mean, like I said earlier on, you can do all the activities in this life that there are to do. N- nothing wrong with that, but at the end of the day when the curtain comes to a close, is it the right thing? Your heart will tell you. Yeah, you're earning the money. Yes, you're getting the bonuses. Yes, you're acing the papers. You're doing good. It looks good outside. The actions speak. But your heart is saying something else. Is that it? Is that what you're supposed to do? So find out what it is, but now secondly, do it. Do it. Stick with it. Be authentic. Be authentic to who you are. Be true to who you are. Don't copy and paste people's hustles and people's pursuits. You are unique. Now that you know what you're supposed to do, do it. Find a way of doing it. And I know here that's one we need to talk about balancing between putting food on the table and doing what you're supposed to do. How do you do it? Miles Monroe says the best time for you if you are employed and you are a man of purpose and you are employed in something that is not your purpose, the best time for you is 5 o'clock. After 5 o'clock, do that which you're called to do to such an extent that at some point in time it will be so much well that now you have enough time to do to get out of the employment and to do this. 
So do it. It's obvious. Finding what to do is the most important. Knowing where to go is the most important. But doing it is where the revolution begins. This man called Abraham Lincoln said, if I'm given six hours to chop down a tree, I'll use four hours to sharpen my axe. So these four hours are for finding out what it is, which we talked about yesterday. But today we're talking about the two hours of doing. Two hours of doing what you're supposed to do. Four hours in my view are normally locating what to do. The two hours are for doing it. In other words, what we, once we found what to do, find the littlest time you can spend on it on a daily basis. And the more time you spend on it, the better. If it's 30 minutes a day, exploit the 30 minutes a day. Can you do? Can you push it to two hours a day? Can you push it to four hours a day? Is it possible for it to become full time? Do it. Doing it will never be a smooth ride, let me tell you. Look at the catalog of Paul's, uh, Paul the Apostle's uh, problems when he was pursuing his purpose. This is what he said. He said, I've been flogged five times with the Jews, 39 lashes, beaten by Roman roads three times and pummeled with drugs once. I've been shipwrecked three times and immersed in an open sea for a night and a day. In hard traveling year in and year out, I've had to forge rivers and fend off robbers and struggle with friends and struggle with foes. I've been a risk in the city and a risk in the country, endangered by desert sun and sea storm and betrayed by those I thought were my friends and brothers. I've known drudgery and hard labor. Many a day, a day I've longed for a night and without sleep. Many a meal have I missed and blasted by the cold and naked to the weather. And that's not what is even half of it. When you throw in the daily pressures and anxieties of all the churches, when someone gets to the end of this rope, I feel the desperation in my bones. When someone is duped into sin and angry, fire burns in my gut. If I have to brag about myself, I'll brag about my humiliations and make me like Jesus and the eternal blessed God and the Father of our Master, Lord Jesus. Now, what a man that is. My point I'm making is your pursuit of purpose will put you under great disappointments. The taking action, the doing it, it's not smooth sailing. You need to overcome apathy. You need to overcome self-doubt. You need to overcome discouragement. You need to overcome obstacles. You need to overcome success events. Because you can easily pitch a tent there. And you also need to overcome mediocrity. You need to overcome luck. But what we're saying is you need to do it. That's it. You need to do it. Get it done. Tomorrow we conclude this series. Until then, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.